In this lesson, we're going to learn how to draw a three-quarter view portrait. Now, three-quarter view portrait is different from the frontal portrait of our first lesson, where the face is staring straight out of paper at you. It's also different from the profile that we did, where the face is looking off to the side. In a three-quarter view, the face is looking a little bit off to the side. The face is not turned all the way to the side, it's turned part way to the side. So the three-quarter view portrait shares some common things with the frontal portrait and the profile. All you're going to need for this lesson is, again, a pencil with an eraser and a sheet of paper. It doesn't require any special skill except maybe uh, the ability to uh, follow some simple guidelines on how to put together any kind of drawing. All right, to do a three-quarter view portrait, we first have to know, okay, which direction is our face going to be looking? Mine is going to be looking a little bit off in that direction right there. Now, the first thing we have to draw is the shape of the head. The shape of the head, as always, is an oval. Now, when you're drawing a three-quarter view portrait, you need to be a little more particular about the shape of that oval for the head. Just as with the profile, you're going to make the side of the head where the face is a little flatter of a curve than you normally would. And then the side that represents the back of the head will be a little bit more rounder of a curve. It's still your basic oval, an egg shape, but you're kind of tweaking that egg shape a little bit in order to uh, make it fit uh, your purposes for a three-quarter view. So the front of that face should be a little flatter, and the back should be somewhat rounder. Now, as with the frontal portrait and the profile, we're going to need guidelines in order to get everything in the right place. Now, the guidelines in a three-quarter view are pretty much like the ones in a frontal portrait. You're going to have a vertical guideline. Remember, in a profile, you don't actually have a vertical guideline. The side of the head is the vertical guideline. So you're going to have a vertical guideline going down the middle of the head. Now, notice the middle of the head isn't right here in the middle of the oval. The head has turned a little bit to one side, and so the middle guideline is going to follow the turn of the head. So if the head's turned a little bit this way, then the guideline's going to be off in that direction too. So you have a vertical guideline, then you have the horizontal guideline across the middle. That's where most of the things in the face are going to go. Then you want to take the space between that horizontal guideline and the bottom of the head, you want to split it in half and make a mark there. That's where the bottom of the nose will be. And you want to take the space between that horizontal guideline and the top of the head and split it in half. And that's where the hairline is going to be. The hair comes partway down the forehead, and that's how far it will be coming down. So we have three guidelines. Top, middle, bottom guideline. And of course, all of these things should be drawn very, very lightly so that you can erase things you don't want at the end and you can get rid of mistakes when you make them. Now we're going to start with the nose. As always, the nose starts right there in the middle of the head at the middle guideline. And as in a profile, the nose is going to be triangular, a triangle shape. It's going to come from the middle guideline, down and out, and then the tip out here is going to be somewhat rounded. Nobody has a razor-sharp triangular corner uh, nose. We can't open can openers. Can openers with our nose. We can't open cans with our nose. All right. So you come down, you have a curved end, and then you come straight in to that vertical guideline again. That's the shape of the nose, a triangle. As with a profile, the nostril is going to be at the bottom of the nose and right back there where the vertical guideline is. And it's going to be shaped like a letter C. 
Now, in this case, that letter C is backwards because the person is looking that direction. If the person were looking that direction, then this nostril would be turned around as well and would read just like a regular letter C. That's pretty much it for the nose. Now we go to the eyes, which go on this middle guideline, just like the top of the nose does. The eyes are done pretty much the same way we do them for the frontal portrait. See, the nose is made just like in a profile. The eyes are made just like in a frontal portrait. We put an oval there for the shape of the eye right on the middle guideline. Then on the other side of the nose, we do the same thing again. Another oval for the shape of the eye. Now here's something you might want to pay attention to for the uh, three-quarter view. It's a little odd, but it makes sense when you think about it. The eye on the near side of the face will often look larger than the eye on the far side of the face. Well, the reason for that is that this eye here is farther away from you, and things that are farther away from you look smaller. Also, the face curves. This is not a flat surface here. The face curves, and this part of the face is curving away from you. So the eye is curving away from you also, and so it gets a kind of a foreshortening effect. When things start to curve away from you, they start to look shorter from side to side. So don't worry if that eye looks a little bit smaller than the eye on the near side. Now, as with the uh, eye in a frontal portrait, we start with the oval shape. And then we need to draw a large circle for the iris. That's the colored part of your eye. And then inside the iris, right dead in the middle of the iris, we draw a large circle for the pupil. And it's black. Next, in the corner of the eye, right by the nose, we draw a small oval shape, and that is our tear duct. Now, along the top of the eye, we're going to draw our eyelashes. Just a bunch of very short lines that represent the hairs for our eyelashes. And as with the other uh, portrait types, you also have eyelashes on the bottom of your eye, but they're usually so fine and short that we don't really notice them when we glance at somebody. But you can draw the eyelashes on the bottom of the eye if you like. It's not really necessary, though. Now, Going over the top of the eye, we have the eyelid. It goes from corner to corner, just an arc that goes over the eye. The eyelid, from corner to corner on the eye. Then we have one more thing on the eye, and that's the eyebrow. Now you can make the eyebrow just about any way you want, as long as you put it over the eyes. There's the eyebrows. Okay, that's about it for the eyes. The eyes go on the middle guideline, the top of the nose goes on the middle guideline, and now we're going to do the ears, which also go on the middle guideline. Now, the ears are drawn the same, whether you're drawing a three-quarter view or a profile or a frontal portrait. It's just a matter of where you put them. In a profile, you pretty much put the ear in the middle of the head, about halfway between the eye and the back of the head. In a three-quarter view, it kind of depends on how far to the side the person's looking. The more they're looking to the side, the more that ear kind of roams to the middle of the head. The less they're looking to the side, the more the ear is out toward the back of the head. Just use your sound judgment. You don't want to draw the ear so it looks like it's attached to the eyeball. You don't want to draw the ear so it looks like it's on the back of the head. It's going to be sort of in the middle of the head. And it just depends, and you can do this by eye, where exactly it would be. And the top of the ear is at the middle guideline. 
The bottom of the ear will be somewhere around where the bottom of the nose is, but people have different size ears, so it can vary. And the ear, of course, is just an oval shape, or an, I just cut off the, this part of the oval and make it a C shape. It's basically an oval shape, though. Inside the ear, as always, we have the cartilage. And as in the other two lessons, the cartilage kind of looks like a curvy capital letter R. Now, in this case, that curvy capital letter R looks backwards because the person's looking off to the left. If they're looking off to the right, then that would be reversed and it would look like a curvy capital letter R. It would read like an R. So now we have the eyes, nose, and ears. And all of those are on the middle guideline. The next thing is the mouth. It's not on the middle guideline. It's right below the nose. And we draw this mouth pretty much the same way we drew the mouth in the frontal portrait. We'll draw a line that represents uh, the space between the lips. And we'll make this mouth about the same width. That is, this end will go to about where the middle of the eye is. This end will go to about where the middle of that eye is. Then we're going to want to put the upper lip on the top. And just like in the frontal portrait, we're going to put a little dip right there in the middle of the upper lip and then have it curve down to the ends of the mouth. And on the bottom, we're just going to make a curve that goes from one end of the mouth to the other end of the mouth. And that's pretty much it for the mouth. Now, before we start putting any other parts of the face on, we're going to take care of a problem we have along the edge of the head. This head is taking on a very much of a face painted on a basketball kind of look because our faces are not smooth curves like this. Our faces have parts that bulge out and parts that go in. And that's a natural thing for us. So we need to make that happen here or this face will always look a little strange as far as we're concerned. So we'll start right here where the eyes are. And we'll start by making the forehead. The forehead bulges out from where the eyes are. So you'll start here at the eyes, bulge it slightly out, and then start curving it back in and make it curve in very gently to the to the top of the head so that nobody will even notice you made the curve in the first place. You do not want this curve for the forehead to look like somebody got hit in the head with a hammer or something. You do not want it to look like a big noticeable bulge. Then from the eye down, we're going to make another curve coming out for the cheek. And it's going to curve very gently in to where the mouth is. And then from there, we might want to curve it gently out again and then back into the bottom of the head to represent the person's chin. And that will be uh, pretty good for the shape of the head. Next, let's go ahead and put the neck on. We'll put the neck on about the same way we put the neck on in a profile. We'll give this person a little a space under his chin. We don't want to have the uh, neck coming all the way up to the front here. It'll look like they can't uh, look down at their shoes or whatever because they, their neck is in the way. So we're going to give them a little space here under their neck. And then we'll draw the front, or under their chin, then we'll draw the front of the neck. Then all we have to do is kind of eyeball it and put the back of the neck wherever it looks like that neck is thick enough to hold that person's head up. This is all just like we did in a profile. So now we've got the neck done, we have only one more really important thing and that is the hair. We're going to do the hair the same way we did in the frontal portrait, but there's going to be some aspects of how we did it in a profile as well. So we're going to go to the top guideline. That's our uh, guideline for where the hairline is, 
And remember, the hairline can be a little above that, it can be a little below that, but it's in the ballpark of where that top guideline is. We're going to draw the hair going across at that point. And then once we're beyond where the eyes are or whatever, we're going to have the hair also come down to the front of the ears. Make sure it does that. You don't want it to wrap around behind the ear. It needs to come down to the front of the ear. One more thing the hair has to do is it needs to come to the back of the neck. Now the hair can be longer. It can come beyond the back of the neck. It can come below where the front of the ears is. It can even cover up the top of the ear or even the entire ear. But these minimum things need to happen. You have to have a hairline going across somewhere where that top guideline is. You have to have the hair coming down to the front of the ear, and you have to have the hair coming at least down to the back of the neck. One more thing is you have to decide how far up off the head is that hair going to stand. And you draw it doing that. There you go. One additional thing you might do in a three-quarter view is you might be able to see some of the hair on the other side of the head. It's overlapped by the forehead, which you might be able to see a little bit of it. There, that's pretty much it for the uh, three-quarter view, except for getting rid of the guidelines. Now, there's one more thing you might want to do that's not required, but you might want to put it in there. It depends on how you want your portrait to look, and that is the jawline. The jawline, if you draw it, will start at the bottom of the ear, and it'll come down, and then it'll curve forward, and it'll curve forward all the way to the bottom of the chin. Now remember, that jawline is, is optional, and even if you want it, you may not want that entire line because that can make the person's uh, face look very hard. You might only want part of that. Uh, of that uh, jawline, just as you may only want part of the line for the eyelids, only part of the line for the bottom of the eye. You may not even want uh, all of this line for the nose. Uh, you decide how soft or hard you want the face to be, and to soften it up, you remove some of those lines, and to uh, harden it up or sharpen it up, you make sure those lines are in there. Now, the last thing we need is to do some erasing. We need to get rid of our guidelines and any mistakes we might have made. So first we're going to get rid of this vertical guideline. Of course it makes no difference what order you get rid of the guidelines as long as you do. This is why you should draw very very lightly because even if by some miracle you make no mistake and everybody makes mistakes, even professional artists, but if you, even if you make no mistake, there are still lines that need to be erased. So you need to draw very lightly so you can do that. So there goes the vertical guideline. Also the middle guideline. And if you can see at the top guideline, mine's uh, been taken over by the hair, so I don't have to erase that. And the bottom guideline for the nose. Now, some more important lines you have to get rid of. You need to get rid of this line for the bottom of the head. You don't want that line going through the neck. It leaves kind of an unpleasant, unpleasant kind of feeling that maybe that person had something bad happen to their neck. You definitely need to get rid of this line for the front of the oval. You now have the front of the face, the shape of the face. You don't need that line for the front of the oval. And if you don't get rid of it, later on when you try to do something a little more advanced with your portrait, that line could end up getting in the way and causing you trouble. So get rid of it for sure. And you also want to get rid of this line for the top of the head.
You have the top of the hair there. You don't need this line anymore. And it can cause trouble as well later on. You know, pay attention to what you're doing. There, there we have a three-quarter view portrait. As I said earlier, you could get rid of parts of things like the jawline. You could get rid of parts of things like the eyelid to soften up the face some. Even parts of the bottom of the eye and a nose. But there we have a three-quarter view portrait. 